It is time to talk about cameras. I'm specifically focusing on a first camera for a beginner who wants to learn, but also does not want to sacrifice quality. It's really important to have a good camera because if you have a good camera, you're gonna to want to take photos. And that is a huge bonus when it comes to learning. You've got that stupid logo on the bottom. You shouldn't be living like this. No one should live like this. This is whokeys.com where you can get a really good deal on a bunch of software, but namely Windows and Office. Where Windows Home or Pro. You can also get a combination of Windows 10 Pro plus Office 2019, or you can just get Office 2019 all by itself. So I'm gonna grab Windows 10 Pro and then we're gonna activate it by clicking on buy now. The coupon code is TS25. See that 1875, TS25, apply. There we go, 1406. Once you've made your purchase, it'll redirect you to this page. If you lose this page, you can just go up here on the top, click on this, and then click on User Center. If it's taken a minute, you can just press the F5 button to refresh the page, and hey, there it is, View Keys and Codes. Then click on Get the Key. You're in the middle of the page, that is your key. Copy that, press Start, type Activate, and click on Activation Settings. From here, click on Change Product Key, paste it in there, click on Next, and you will be activated. Again, thanks to whokeys.com for sponsoring this video, and that coupon code is TS25. Grab some stuff while you're over there, Windows, Office, and get it activated. If you haven't seen my photography tutorial that covers ISO, aperture, and shutter speed, please watch that first, because a lot of times having an education makes you a much better customer, and you'll also know exactly what you want more. You'll know what the terms mean. It won't be so overwhelming, because right now it is really overwhelming. There's so many things. So please watch the tutorial first. It's Trust me, it's really going to help you. And then come back here and I'll uh, you know watch this video for some recommendations for beginner cameras. The tutorial is in the top of the description underneath the Windows 10 advertisement stuff. So you'll see it down there. So on Twitter, I said, I'm getting tired of, you know, doing all the bad takes. Give me some of your bad takes. And Joe responded with an amazing take. This is not a bad take. Said the tech YouTube place pretty much conditions people to think they are. Uh, they constantly need to be upgrading their PC hardware when most people will be fine holding out for another generation, saving money and creating less waste. And that goes for photography tenfold because with a big camera like the one I'm going to be recommending in just a second, you can take pictures that are pretty much on par with the stuff that's brand new on the market that costs 10 times as much. One of these versus stuff that costs 10 times as much. There are caveats, of course, newer technologies, better autofocus, in-body image stabilization and stuff like that. But the price to performance ratio is right here. So let's talk about what I'm going to recommend. And I'll do that right now in the beginning. And then we'll talk about um, some other options and some other ideas and then some just general tips to help you get by. So I'm going to recommend if you're a, you know new to photography and you want to learn just general all around photography, I'm going to recommend this kit here that I put together, God, like 10 years ago. I don't know. Started with a Canon 5D. Well, I started with a Rebel. Hated it. It just did not feel like a real camera. It felt like a toy. It, it took okay pictures, pretty good pictures. Then we've got the 5D Mark II, which is kind of a sweet spot because a lot of the cameras coming out today have around the same megapixel count as this camera that came out of much, much longer ago. And um, that you're mainly paying for the size and a few extra bells and whistles, but really you can get it right here and just be good to go. Another thing I like about this kit, I've got a 24 to 70 lens on here. This is a constant f 2.8 aperture lens, meaning that as you zoom, you don't go up to 5.6, meaning that as you zoom, you're going to be able to shoot in lower light conditions. And also you're going to get nicer background blur, which makes the images look more professional and just more like real photography instead of like phone photography. That's one of the main reasons you're going to get something like this and not use your phone, right? All right. So let's go right into recommending this. Now, the caveat right off the bat is this is big. It's a little heavy, um, but I'll show you a secret to make it easier to wield. If you're wearing a camera like this and you're moving around, it's going to like bounce around while you're moving. Show you the way that, uh, a homeless dude in, in New York ran up to me while I was wearing my camera and it was flopping around and he didn't say anything. He was just like, did this. And he reached over, gently took the camera off my head, turned it around like this. The camera's facing me. And then you put it on like this so that the, the back is facing out. There you go. And you put it on like a bandolier, like your, your arm goes through. There we go. Now, this camera stays right here. I move around and stuff like that. It stays right here. So you can run, jog, because it's it's flat now. 
It doesn't bounce around anymore. It makes sense because the straps are up here on the top. If the straps are on the bottom, do it the other way around. But now this is kind of locked in place right here. It's, <laughs> my hair is stuck under here. It's brilliant. And then you just like have to take it off. Just make sure you put on your backpack first, then this second. Because if you put on your backpack, if you put this on underneath your backpack, every time you're gonna have to like take off the backpack if you wanna get out your camera. But this is the Canon 5D. I'm gonna recommend getting a 5D if you don't care about printing. You know, you don't really care about printing. Um, you can still prop in on these 12.8 megapixels. So if you just like look up the sensor and look at the maximum resolution, you know, like megapixels, what does that mean? Like 30 megapixels, 20 megapixels, 10 megapixels, what does that mean? 12.8 megapixels is bigger than 4K resolution. So if you're running on a 1080p monitor at home, it'll be a 4X magnification over your monitor. So you'll be able to crop in four times and still have a full-size desktop wallpaper. You'll be able to do a decent amount of cropping. Now, when it comes to doing your maximum prints, if you're doing like studio quality prints, then this is probably not the camera that you wanna go with. You wanna go with something with more uh, megapixels because if you print something that's like 30 inches wide, it'll look great from three feet away with the Canon 5D. It'll look absolutely beautiful. But once you get up and like look at it really closely, you'll see the pixels. So this is gonna be important if you wanna sell your photos or sell your prints or something like that, you'll want something bigger. But for I'd say 91% of the people out there, a Canon 5D is an incredibly low priced camera that doesn't have a million bell, you know, doesn't have a million bells and whistles, but it looks so good. The quality of the image sensor, uh, it's not as, as good in low light as some other cameras out there, but it produces a really nice contrast. So I love this camera, but if you want more megapixels, the 5D Mark II is what I have here. And I do feel like there's something different about this one compared to the 5D. Uh, the 5D maybe had a little richer contrast, but nothing you can't fix with the bumping up the contrast a little bit here on, on this one, you know, out, out of the camera. And I love the pictures that come out of the 5D Mark II. It is a bit heavier than a lot of the smaller cameras that are on the market right now, but it is what it is. You're getting um, a really good deal on a 21 megapixel full frame camera. I would recommend getting one without a lens, and that's because we are going to get a separate lens. Here's that lens. This is the Sigma 24 to 70 2.8 IF EX DG HSM. This is for Nikon. Um, find one for this is for Canon right here. Oh, it's gonna. It's only a dollar. So this lens is about 90% as good as the Canon lens that costs a couple grand. About 90%. The Canon lens that's a couple grand has the same specs basically, but just a little sharper here and there and produces slightly smoother pictures. But for the money, this is 90% of the way there. It's, this is such a good lens. In fact, when I went to uh, Vermont right now, this is lighter weight than the Canon lens. And I've got like a gazillion lenses, but when I went, went to Vermont, I decided not even to take any of my Canon L glass. I just took this and th these two things together. That's all. And you know, it does get a little bigger when you do the zoom and stuff. And the autofocus is pretty fast. But again, this camera has contrast based autofocus. It doesn't have the focus that follows your eye around. So you just have to aim and focus. You know, it's got like a few dots that you pick. You pick the dot you want to focus on. There's like, I think 10 or 11 focus points, not so many. It works great. I mean, it really does. It's ridiculous how much more expensive the new stuff is while still at about the same quality. So that's what I recommend. If you're just getting started, you wanna learn photography, this is the all around kit right here. That lens, this camera, you gotta get a compact flash card, which are pretty inexpensive these days. Um, these batteries will last all day, you know, cause we don't, we're not really using the, the back that much, unless you know, you're doing some video work. Some I'm too close to focus. focus but it does have a video mode and you can install third-party firmware and shoot amazing videos with this. People use these things for, for movies. It's only 1080p, but the video quality of that is still amazing. Some people are gonna say, well, you know what? I like Canon, but I wanted to go with a different line of lenses. I, I wanna get into a different family. Like I wanna get into the Sony family of lenses and I wanna prepare because you know I've decided that in the future, I wanna have myself a Sony camera or I wanna have myself a very small camera so, you know, a lot of people get very worried about like the family of lenses that they're going to be getting themselves into. Okay, that's an okay argument. Um, but I'm gonna try to persuade you that that's not as big of a deal as you think it is. You can switch to from one family to another. So don't let that stop you from getting 
a good camera right now. The most important thing is getting a camera that you can use right now to take photos and take good photos. And the other thing is um, there are really good adapters that allow you to use lenses from different camera families with one another. You know, I can use, I've got a Canon 50 millimeter 1.2 that is a magic lens. It looks much better than Sony's 50 millimeter in my opinion. Sony has their own like DG whatever 50 millimeter lens. And I would rather use my Canon lens with an adapter on a Sony body. It just has a smooth, it, the way it catches light is just velvety is the way I would, uh, you know, the word I would use. And that's not something that's quantifiable. And that's not something you're going to see in a lot of these, you know, comparison videos where they zoom in and they pixel peep and they look at all the different, the edges and how sharp is it there. They're not going to be able to talk about that sort of ephemeral quality. Um, and this, this mad, you know, like you'll see some people in the comments being like, this is the magic lens. Well, the 51.2 for me, the Canon one is like a magic lens. It's really expensive and I bought it when I was doing a lot of professional photography, but I still use that on whatever. I just buy, a, buy an adapter for it. So if you find your favorite lenses, don't worry. You can usually get an adapter for one to two hundred dollars that'll work with any other body. And that's going to be a lot cheaper than getting different lenses on different bodies. Now, having said that, should you plan ahead for something that's this inexpensive? Just get it and learn photography. That is the the prerogative here, learning photography. Th this is the only thing. If you have more money and you decide you want small cameras, the new mirrorless cameras are smaller than these SLR cameras. Uh, the mirrorless cameras do not have a mirror inside, so they can be thinner, more compact. It's just basically a lens sitting very close to the sensor. So you can have smaller cameras without the mirror on the inside. If you can see on the inside here, let me turn this off. They have, see that mirror inside there? It makes it a little deeper. When you take a picture, that mirror will fold up whenever it's doing lens clean, uh, cleaning and stuff. That mirror actually moves on the inside there. It flattens out and moves, moves around. It's a, it's a mechanical piece that moves. And that's the way SLR cameras have always been. But a lot of the mirrorless cameras are built more like range finders. You know, they're smaller and don't have a lot of stuff on the inside. So if you want to go smaller, it is going to cost you more money. But let's just say for one second, you've got a little bit more money and you wanna go small. The Sony Alpha stuff, a little more money. The S Sony Alpha A7 II, it's not small enough for me to recommend it over the Canon. It is smaller, but, and then this one, the Canon EOS RP. This is an ugly, uh, oh God, this is garish. But you know, you can get the RP in all black as well. But it's very similar to this camera, except quite a bit smaller and lighter weight. The other thing about smaller cameras, is you're going to need to get more expensive lenses. If you were to get a 50 millimeter prime lens for this camera, it's like 120 bucks. Highly recommend this lens. It's great. If you want to get that same lens, this is a new one here. You might be able to get it a little cheaper, but yeah, 199 is generally the price for the smaller version of that lens. It's just a more, it's more difficult to make lenses that small. All right, so we helped you pick like a full on kit, but let's say you want a prime lens. What's the difference in a prime lens and a zoom lens? Well, the prime lens has no zoom. Your legs become the zoom. You just have to run closer to the subject. But it also um, gives you superior, it's superior optics because you have fewer elements in front of the sensor. The fewer pieces of glass you have in front of the sensor, the better you are generally. To worry about, it, you don't have any zoom to worry about. It's just set at 50 millimeters or 35 millimeters. You can usually have like a faster aperture and that's gonna mean softer, more beautiful background blur. Now the starting point for that is what they call the Nifty 50. So this is a 50 millimeter 1.8 lens. It's small, but it's a decent lens. I think it's mostly plastic. It might not be all plastic. It's nice and small as well, which I really like. And this will give you that really professional background blur that a lot of times people look at and say like, now that is a photo. It really separates you know, your camera from a cell phone camera. That's where you really get that separation. So I would recommend getting, you know, this and this to start just so you have a nice zoom. And it's got 2.8, which is pretty good. But then you're going down to that 1.8 with that 50 millimeter lens and you've got a full on kit there. You can even start, you know, charging money for, you know, after you get the hang of it, charging money for portraits and headshots and all kinds of things. All right, now I'm going to give you a tip on um, how to get the best prices when it comes to really good lenses, go check out Sigma. They made this lens and I've got a couple of Sigma lenses. I got like three of them, but for the money, they really can't be beat because they give you about 90 to 99% of the quality of like the first party lenses like Canon and Sony and all that kind of stuff. Even Leica, they give you like 90% of that quality. Sometimes they give you the same quality or even, sometimes it's even sharper. Like you'll see some of the reviews and they're like, the Sigma is surprisingly sharper than the Canon lens. And they're about half the price. 
This is a 35 millimeter f1.4, a beautiful lens. 35 millimeters is like good for a portrait that also gives you a little bit of the scene. So if you're someone who wants to capture the scene and the subject, 35 is great for you. And let's look at Sigma's price. $7.99, brand new. If you wanna check eBay, you might be able to get this one cheaper. And then for the like exact same lens, 35 1.4 from Canon, you see we're paying $17.99. Now this is a beautiful lens. It's compact, it's quiet, it's fast, but so is this. This is a beautiful lens. Sigma is really, really, really doing a good job these days. So if you're you know, deciding what lenses you wanna get, figure out what focal lengths are gonna be best for you. Like, do you like to shoot zooms? Do you like to shoot expansive, you know, 24 millimeter wide uh, scenery shots? Figure out what's gonna be best for you in that regard. And then take a look at Sigma first, because you might find that Sigma is gonna give you a way better deal than you would get with Canon or Sony or, or any other brand. So I actually like their stuff. I like their 50 millimeter better than Sony as well. Like Sony's, it, it's got, they've got a good 50 millimeter prime lens, like their 1.4 or whatever it is. But I like Sony's, I mean, I like uh, Canon's better and I like Sigma, Sigma's better, so. And the other thing that's nice about Sigma is they make lenses for everybody. They make lenses for Nikon, they make lenses for Canon. They make lenses for, well, Sigma has their own stuff now, but they usually do L, L lenses, which are Leica lenses on their own stuff. And they make them for Sony. So they make them for everybody. But that's my little tip there is, is look at Sigma. Uh, and Tamron is also sort of mirroring Sigma's um, quality as well. They're, they're starting to, they, Tamron used to be like back in the days when you went to like malls to buy cameras and stuff like that. The, the cheap lenses were, Sigma was like the top of the line cheap lenses. They are pretty good, but not, on par with like Canon and Nikon and stuff. And then below them, if you wanted like super budget, you would get Tamron. But now even Tamron is making some really good lenses. So it's a good time to be into photography and this is a really good place to start. If you specifically want a video covering the smaller cameras that I really didn't talk about, like the Nikon Z, uh, some of the, I don't know, Fuji stuff, which is amazing. Um, and the, the Canon R stuff, EOS R stuff, let me know. I can make a video on those. I've played around with them a little bit. They're good. I mean, you, you're paying extra for the, for the compact size uh, and you're gonna have to pay extra for those compact lenses. But if it means that you'll use it, that's important. You know, having something that's nice and small. When it comes to like really small, I'm kind of just like a um, Fuji fan. And I can make separate videos about all these things. Just let me know in the comments what questions you have. And I'll hop in and answer them and possibly make more videos and we'll have some fun with photography. But go ahead and get started with photography. It's a good time of year to be out there taking pictures. And don't be afraid of full frame. Thanks for the sponsor, and we'll see you in the comments.